You're listening to episode 61 of the D6 Podcast. Here's the encouragement I give you. The shortest distance between your child's heart, your grown child's heart, and Christ is you. Parents need to own that they are the primary disciples of their child. Our goal in parenting is not for our kids ultimately to get a great education, as good as that is. Our goal is not for them to be great athletes. Our goal is not for them to go on great dates and have find a great husband or a great wife. Our goal is not for them to have a great career with a great job, making great money. Our goal is for them to love a great God. A great God, a great God. A great You're great listening God. to the D6 Podcast. Here's your hosts, Ron Hunter and Jeremy Lee. This is the podcast that helps you build an excellent family ministry in your church. And Ron, listen, an excellent family ministry doesn't happen without good volunteers. It cannot happen. And uh, that's why a a pretty consistent theme among our guests, pretty more often than not, we're going to be talking about this as much as we can. Volunteers, building a volunteer culture, building a healthy place where volunteers can be a part of something that's bigger than themselves, that's that's not easy to develop and grow. That's why we need the help of folks like Jason Byerly. Yes, it truly is. And in fact, I've often joked, uh, you know, the easiest way to manage volunteers is start paying them. You can hold them accountable far better. <laughs> that's that's that right. Yeah, but, I've always said it would be so much easier to pay. <laughs> yes. But Jason, uh, now I'm, I'm going to make a statement and it's going to either turn people off or I hope it hooks them right into what he's about to say. Jason manages more volunteers on Sunday morning than most churches have in their entire congregation. So if you can wow. if you can imagine being, you know, strained or or you know bothered with managing 20 or 30, you know, volunteers, you know, Jason manages hundreds every Sunday morning among multi campuses and mm. he does it brilliantly and he's got a simple system that works whether or not you're dealing with 10 or 1000, doesn't matter. So this is the kind of guy that You'd pay a couple hundred dollars to come consult you at your church, if, you, if, if and he's going to sit down and do this for free today. So after the break, we're going to hear from our man Jason Byerly, super smart guy. You're not going to—he's going to have tons of practical insights for you that you can use this week in your ministry. So after the break, we'll hear from him. He's going to be talking about setting your volunteers up for a win. Do you ever feel as if you spend so much time doing the work of the ministry that you never actually minister to people? Wouldn't it be great if you had a little help with your ministry to-do list? What if you already had two training emails for your volunteers each month along with a fully produced video that drove the point home? What if you were able to share nearly every main stage talk that has ever happened at the D6 conference with your ministry team? Imagine having a ministry coach pour into you personally each month. What if we gave you a resource that you could give to parents in your ministry to have tough conversations around life's difficult topics? This is the kind of stuff they can really use, and they'll be grateful to receive. When you become a member of the D6LN, we immediately make your life easier. We help you with your weekly event, teacher training, family ministry, parent helps, and your own personal ministry helps. The D6 Leader Network is going to give you content, coaching, and community throughout the entire year. The D6 Leader Network makes awesome easy. Just go to d6leader.net to give it a try today. Today we're going to be talking about setting your volunteers up for a win. And who doesn't want that? I mean, you wouldn't be a great minister if you set your volunteers up to lose. That wouldn't be good. No, so that's not good at all. We need a win. And to help us get that win is Mr. Jason Byerly. He uh, writes at simplekidmen.com. He is a children's minister at Southland Church yes, in Lexington, right. Kentucky. You nailed it. Uh, he's been in children's ministry for about 20 years. He's got friends who come by on the exhibit hall and wave at him because he's popular. This guy is an amazing guy. And he does set his volunteers up for a win every week and he does it using three t's so mr jason let's walk through each one of the t's that you use to set volunteers up for a win 
Absolutely. So for us, those T's are training, they're tools, and they're just talking. So here's the deal. We, we basically have three audiences on a weekend that we're trying to serve, kids, leaders, and parents. If we can serve leaders really, really well, then the kids and the parents kind of fall in behind that. So that's why we use that as our big eval question. So on Monday morning, the number one thing we talk about is, did we set these leaders up to win? And we look at those three T's. We look at, we look at our training, we look at our tools, and, and we look at conversations, what we've talked about with our leaders, what we're learning from what their experience is like. So first of all, for us, like we just want people to walk in and feel like rock stars. They're super confident because we've given them everything that we possibly could to set them up to just have great experiences with our kids. And this applies to children's ministry, student ministry. It doesn't matter what your context is. I mean, the reality of it is, is that we have so many folks that come in and volunteer in age level or next gen ministries. And they have this whole life outside of there. Um, they, don't, they don't live in it like we do. And maybe their job is this awesome ministry for them. But for a lot of them, um, this is their get to. You know, their job might not be that fulfilling. It might not be what they're called to do. It might not be what they eventually want to do. But when they come in on Sunday, like this is like their one chance to be a part of something big. And nobody signs up for children or students to be babysitters. They want God to use them to change lives, to bless a kid, to make disciples, to grow the kingdom. And so our question is, do we give them training that sets it up to make that possible? Do we tee them up to do something awesome? Awesome. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so training for us is always tough because it's a busy world. There's a lot of noise. So have to figure out training that, that we can keep personal to keep that personal discipleship touch, keep that relational side to it. But also you can fit into their busy lives. I know, especially in children's ministry, there's a lot of information they have to know, just a lot of safety and security things, check in, check out restroom policies, let alone how to be a great like life group leader with kids. So there's a lot to communicate. And so we start on the front end with just a conversation across the table like this. We walk them through their interview process and get to know them and all of that. And then we begin to give them some kind of broad strokes of training. So we'll paint it with a really broad brush and then we give them some online stuff that just fills in the gaps. Um, we have a thing that we do call our children's ministries, the big picture show. So we have big picture show university. So for each role in our volunteer ministry, there's a 101, 201, 301 and 401 video. That's like three to five minutes. And then there's a, a Google form they fill out and just tell us like, what's the one thing they got out of it or one thing they want to work on. We, We've got a guy who set up a real cool website for it, but you could do that with YouTube and your iPhone. Mm. So sit down with your iPhone, shoot a three to five minute, just here's the least you need to know going in that first weekend and email it out to your to your leader. Ask them to email you back what they thought, what's what's the one big thing they were taking away, one thing they, they might wanna work on or learn and go from there. So 101, they have to watch before the first time they serve, but then we work with them and walk them through the 201, 301, 401 as they serve longer in ministry. So that's the that's kind of the front end stuff. That's good. That's good stuff. That's a very cohesive, clear plan. I love that. Now you talked about tools. What are some of the tools? Yeah, so tools, this is everything from curriculum, the supplies that make that curriculum work, the environment we put them in, and even the way that we help manage the time in that environment. Um, let me give you a great example of how I epically failed in a time management situation that totally threw my leaders under the bus. So several years ago, I was leading this amazing volunteer team and we had these incredible communicators that were going to bring in the lesson from the stage and they were just killing it with the kids. This was like one of our first big kickoff weekends. We had all these small group leaders sitting with the kids, waiting in the wings. They had all their small group lessons, supplies, all these hours had been put in for to prepare the stuff for them by other volunteers. And what happened is the lesson was going so well, the large group team just kept going. Mm. And I'm standing in the back of the room with the guy who is the coach over the small group leaders. And he's watching the clock tick down. And when we look up, we realize we, we can't go to small group time. We can't do the activity that was supposed to lead to this awesome discussion. And he just throws his arms up and he says, all that time, that all that my my or my supply volunteers prepped, that all of my leaders prepped, getting ready for this, it's all wasted. We can't do any of today. Walked out. So not only did I did I inadvertently create a rift between those large group communicators and this guy, but all of those leaders just got thrown under the bus because they didn't have that opportunity to do what God called them to do that weekend. Mm. All because I didn't step in at some point and manage that time better. On the other side of it, you can give people way too much time, right? So if your tools, your curriculum, your activities, your discussion, your game or whatever, if they don't support this 
huge gap of time you've given them, you know, then you're going to have kids climbing the walls and you you know your leaders are going to be frustrated. So time management is a huge part. The environment is a huge part. Do you have enough space? Let's say for small groups, is there space for them to meet and actually talk and hear each other? You know, one of the deals that we had um, over the summers, our kindergarten room got really really crowded. We do large group and small group, and so your leaders just couldn't hear each other. And so we started like picking some of those groups out into like the, where we met for large group. And the leader said, hey, we can actually talk to each other. And like, bless their hearts, they were so faithful. They hadn't complained about it. But when once we actually solved the problem, we realized that it was a much bigger problem than we thought because they, they couldn't hear each other mm. during the lesson. Um, it's the right kind of space, safe kind of space, um, you know, all of that that sets them up to win. On the curriculum, I mean, you know, curriculum, it's a whole range of stuff. If you give somebody something that's really fun, but it's just fluff, well, they haven't had that opportunity to be used by God in that really pivotal way that that, the, that they signed up for. They're like, I came here because I believe God wanted to use me to impact the life of a child or a student. And if the curriculum is fluff, they're not going to have that experience. They're not going to have that significant conversation. They're not going to have that aha moment with God. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if the curriculum is really, really deep, but it's not any fun or doesn't relate to the world of a student or a kid, then they're never even going to get to the beginning of those conversations. So, is there, so does the curriculum set them up to win? Both is it, is it really powerful, transformational, and is it also really um, relevant to the, whoever it is they're, they're trying to reach? Another big piece of it I'm real passionate about is just the stuff that it takes to make curriculum work. Maybe not so much in student ministries, but in children's ministries, you know, we do a lot of these small group activities that just require a lot of supplies. And in the old days, I would have these Sunday school teachers who were staying up half the night, Saturday night, cutting stuff out, getting crafts ready. And by the time they get in with the kids, they're so caught up in their supplies that they're not available for relationship. They're not available just to connect face to face. They're not available to listen to the Holy Spirit to see what He wants to do and how He wants to use this moment. So um, it reminds me, Acts 6, you know, there's the big controversy about the widows are not getting their food. Everybody's up in arms. And the 12 get everybody together and they say, wait, 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 wait. We are neglecting the word of God because we're waiting tables. Nothing wrong with waiting tables, but that's not what God's called us to do. And in the same way, if you've got small group leaders, life group leaders, and they're called to build relationships with kids, let them do that. Mm. So there are other people, just like in Acts 6, there were other people who were called to do the other stuff. So one thing I'm, uh, I'm a huge fan of is... Um, placing people according to their gifts. So there are administrative people. There are people who love to cut things out and sort and group and put things together ahead of time. They don't want to be on the floor with kids on a Sunday morning. They don't want to be leading a small group on a Wednesday night, but man, they will, they will prepare the stuff to create the environment for life change all day long. They get a win because they get to do their part. And then a small group leader or Sunday school teacher gets to walk in and just do their thing, use their gifts and not be encumbered by the other stuff. So, talked about tools, talked about training. Let's talk about talk. Talk. Let's so, do it. let's do it. So many times, uh, you know, children's student ministries, it's 100 miles an hour. We're just making it happen. We're, we're trying to manage the time, keep the trains going on time. We're trying to get everybody in the right place and trying to get everybody through uh, the end of the, the day or the end of the night safely back to their families. And um, sometimes we don't stop just to have that conversation. We don't look into our leader's eyes and see, are they, are they freaking out? Are they, are they exhausted? Are they frustrated? Are they on fire? Because something awesome happened in their group that day. And so one of the things that I just try to do and, and our, our whole team is, is great about is just talking to leaders. How was your morning? Hey, what was your time like with the kids? Just to open up those lines of communication so that we never get to that place where somebody is who should be called and, and would, should stick with us for years and years and years walks out frustrated because they never had the opportunity to voice that. And so it's that whole relational piece that we just want to know, like, are we setting you up to win? Because if we're not, tell us, because we are here to serve you. You know, that whole mindset, kind of old school mindset of, of leaders are here to do our work for us, man, that is, is so dead because the reality of it is, is servant leaders serve. And that's what we are. If you're a point leader in children's or students, whether you're on staff or you're in a volunteer role, if you're serving other leaders, it's a towel and basin kind of thing. So your whole focus really needs to be, am I doing that well? Am I putting them in the best position to allow God to use them for eternal 
purposes. Mm. So that's it. Man, that's a, the, your volunteers are winning a lot. I think at your church, where Some, you go? Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But we try to find out if they're not, and try to adjust yeah. and try to figure that out. So, well, listen, this has been amazing. I feel like somebody could listen to this and just take it right on to it and let it guide their volunteer policy, yeah. their volunteer yeah. program. And uh, I hope this was informative, encouraging to you. Uh, tell them real quick because you've got a blog and it's real simple because it's, it's really simple because it's called simple kid simple kid tell them a little bit about that so they might want to come and visit it yeah here's the thing I have over 20 years I have been blessed to be able to serve in churches of every shape and size little bitty churches in the middle of the country currently I'm in a multi-site mega church situation I've been everywhere in between a lot of different cultural contexts in those churches the best things in children's ministry, man. They're simple and they transfer. It's those principles that you can take with you anywhere. They're so portable. I used to go back in the day to the Promised Land conferences back in the late 90s. Yeah. And, you know, just this enormous blowout, so inspirational. And I remember talking to leaders saying, oh, yeah, but that doesn't apply at our church. But the truth is the principles applied. And when we started applying some of those, we saw transformation happen in our kids and our leaders and our parents in us. And the best ministry principles are always like that because it's kids, it's Jesus. Mm. It's the word of God and it's life change. And, and that can happen anywhere in any context. So, so that's right. what I try to write about. I try to give tools for that. I love it. So we've been listening to Jason Byerly helping us get a win for our volunteers and ultimately a win for us, a win for our yeah. church and a win for... Jesus. Win for Jesus. There you go. Jesus for the win. There you go. And please go check him out if you want to online at simplekidmen.com. I don't think you'll be disappointed, especially if you're a kidman. It's going to be really simple and you're going to love it. All right. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to y'all later. There are so many ministry conferences to choose from these days, so how do you know which one to attend? Well, there's only one family ministry conference designed to help your ministry team get on the same page to minister to families in your city. The D6 Conference invites over 50 of the top family ministry leaders to lead your ministry team through a learning and planning process that you'll never forget. The whole event is centered around making sure each of your age-graded ministers have the chance to learn and grow together. You won't believe what a difference it makes when your ministry team dreams together at the same event. So, this year, make plans to come to the D6 Conference. We'll even let your senior pastor come for free. Just use the code BOSSMAN during registration. D6 is the one conference for your entire team. To learn more, go to d6conference.com. So thank you, Jason, for taking some time to help us have better volunteers, uh, better volunteer ministries, really. It's hard to build a good volunteer culture, Ron. It is. And, you know, Jason has given us real simple touch points that if we just take these principles and, and, and apply them, whether we have 10 or 15 or 300 volunteers, it's going to work. Yeah. He's, I, he's lived this for years. I, I remember when uh, I was young in ministry and this concept was first explained to me that you can really multiply yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a story about a man who went to the hospital and said, I'm here to be with this family that had been in a car accident. And they said, well, his minister has already come. And there's like, no, I'm his minister. What you? you know, he was thinking that he might be going to another church or something. And, and then he looked down the hallway and he saw a volunteer who had yeah. introduced himself as the minister for the family and, and how that just connected to him as, hey, I can minister to 10, 20, 30 people maybe when I'm at my best. And, That's right. Uh, but when my group grows past 30, what do I do? And, and this is the answer. You go get 30 other people who can minister to 30 people, and then your possibilities grow exponentially. And that's what volunteer ministry is about. But it's not easy. And just as we're hearing from Jason, I mean, you got to really invest in building that culture. That's right. And and so, you know, I think that uh, anybody who's a leader and works with volunteers, they are some of the best leaders you'd ever want to see. Because it's easier to, to lead people who are paid, as we kind of joked about before the break. So my hat's off to literally the, the ministry leaders who work with volunteers. Not that they're tough. It's just the toughest job to lead. 
And if you're looking for a ministry skill to sharpen, this is definitely one. If you want to be a minister for the long haul and be valuable to the churches you're serving, this is something to get good at and get good at quickly. That's right. Uh, Helping and training and growing volunteers, that is something that churches value big time. So thanks to Jason for helping us get better at it today. I appreciate you guys for taking the time to listen. I hope it made you better and it challenged you and you grew. That's the whole point of the podcast. And next week, we're going to keep talking about volunteers. We're going to bring back another stud, Corey Jones, who has a lot to say about volunteers as well. We talked to him about how he onboards new volunteers once he recruits them. That is a very skilled process. And I'm going to tell you, Corey is very detailed about it and and if and, and I'm a I was like as I was listening to him I was like this is just pretty much like a tutorial this is something that our listeners are going to love this cuz they can just just basically do what he's saying and you're going to level up in your volunteer ministry so back to back volunteer book market back check us out back volunteer we will connect with you next week that's right Mr. Corey Jones will be with us we'll talk to you then You've been listening to the D6 Podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. And if you're a minister, we invite you to join the D6 Leader Network by going to d6leadernetwork.com.